Good day learners. Welcome to today's technical mathematics lesson. My name is Matule Latakomo. This lesson is brought to you by Saibon Discovery Center in collaboration with Gauden Department of Education. Good day grade 11s. Um, today's topic we are going to talk about exponents and sets. Uh, without any waste of time let's look at our lesson objectives um, at the end of this lesson learners must be able to simplify the exponential expression with terms and simplify expression with sets including addition subtraction multiplication and division of sets um, exponential expression um, here we are talking about addition and subtraction of exponential expression with factors and terms. Remember this uh, work is for first term and week 3 to week 5. So we are going to follow the steps on how to simplify the exp exponential expression with factors and terms. So our first step, it stated that we have to factorize all the bases to prime factors. That is the first uh, step. You must uh, factorize all the bases to prime factors. So you must know your prime factors and you can even use your calculator to get your prime factors. Step number two, we must simplify each term separately. And step number three, we must separate or split the exponents with the, its basis. And step number four, we must factorize the expressions. Remember, we factorize by taking out the common factor. And step number five, we must simplify or cancel the common factors. So those are the five simple steps that you need to follow when we're dealing with exponential expressions. So let's look at our uh, first activity there. The first activity, it says, uh, simplify the following exponential expression. You can see we have four um, activities there that we have to uh, do. So now you can see our box there with a helpful hint. It reads as follows. Um, you can use exponents to write prime factorization. Remember that an exponent tells you how many times the base is a factor. So now, um, without any waste of time, let's look at how uh, are we supposed to simplify our activities. With the first uh, activity there, uh, there is something common if you can look at your denominator and uh, numerator, but we have to simplify it first for us to give um, at a proper answer. If you can check in uh, this expression, you have four to the power of two X. And at the numerator, you have also four to the power of two X. But looking at your denominator, sorry, looking at your numerator, you still have 16 there to the power of X. So we need to know how do we uh, simplify 16 to have the base of 4 because you can see that uh, the numerator and denominator the leading base is 4. So with simplifying uh, this uh, expression you are going to say 4 to the power of 2x minus 1 plus now we can simplify uh, 16 but it will have to have the base of 4 to the power of 2. So 4 to the power of 2, it will give you um, 16. So we still have to multiply it with x there. Then you say all over 4 to the power of 2x. Using our rule of exponents, remember you have to uh, remove the brackets. So you will say this is equal to 4 to the power of 2x, then we can start to separate now. Remember, when we separate, 
the same base, when they multiply each other, you can add their exponents. So it means we are moving from when you have a base of m plus n, then we can separate this by saying x to the power of n multiply by, multiply by x to the power of n. So that's how we are separating this. Hence, you can see what I've done uh, here on the numerator. Then we're going to say plus. We know that 2 will multiply x. Then we're going to have 4 to the power of 2x. 4 to the power of 2x. And your num uh, denominator is 4 to the power of 2x. Then you can check your uh, numerator that we have a common factor in the two terms that we have there, which is 4 to the power of 2 in your numerator. You can see that 4 to the power of 2, it applies in the, uh, it, 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 uh, it's in the first term and the second term. So it's our common uh, factor. So how do we then simplify our common factor? You know that we can take it out as 4 to the power of 2x. We factorize it by taking out as 4 to the power of 2x. Then inside the bracket, if you remove this 4 to the power of x, on inside the bracket, we're going to le be left with 4 to the power of negative 1 plus. So here it's where most of uh, learners make mistakes when they say, if you remove 4 to the power of x uh, in that term there, most of us we're saying you will remain with 0. But what you'll remain with is actually 1 all over 4 to the power of 2x. So when you take it out as a common factor, this term here, you are not going to left with 0 in that. You will be left with 1. Why am I saying you will uh, be left with 1? When you factorize, you should be able to go back from the second step there. So if you want to go back to the second step, you will multiply by 4 to the power of x inside the bracket. Then you will say 4 to the power of, I mean 4 to the power of 2x multiplied by 1. It will give you 4 to the power of 2x. So we haven't changed anything there. So you must be able to remember this when you are dealing with your, your factorization there. Okay? So moving forward from this, you can see that in your denominator and your numerator, we have a common factor. That's where we have a step of cancellation. From the cancellation part, then you will be remaining with 4 to the power of negative 1 plus 1. Then you can say four, 1 over 4 plus 1. If you simplify using your calculator, you're going to have 5 over 4. So it's very important to understand this part of taking out the common factor that the minute you have only uh, that term in a, that number in a term when we take it out you remain with one not zero so that's how you solve um your first uh activity there going to the second activity we have to simplify the following expression you have a uh, 2 to the power of 2x plus 3 minus 6 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2x plus 1 all divided by 2 to the power of 2x plus 2. You can see that as we are simplifying this, the leading uh, common factor is going to be 2 to the power of 2x. So we can see that we have 2 to the power of 2x here. 2 to the power of 2x here and 2 to the power of 2x here. So that's what is going to be common. But before we can even uh, cancel it, we have to follow the steps of simplifying. 
the first step, there is nothing that we have to put as a prime factor because 2 is already on its base. So we're going to start by doing that, splitting the basis with the exponents. So we're going to say 2 to the power of 2x multiplied by 2 to the power of 3 minus 6 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2x multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 all over 2 to the power of 2x multiplied by 2 to the power of 2. Now you have seen how I have separated those uh, exponents with the basis because if you say 2 to the power of 2x multiplied by 2 to the power of 3x, you will get 2 to the power of 3, I mean 2 to the power of 2x plus 3. So that's how we split our, our exponent with basis. Then from there, we identify the common factor. You can see that 2 to the power of 2x and 2 to the power of 2x in the first and the second term. Those are going to be your common factors in your numerator. Then now, if we take it as a common factor, 2 to the power of 2x into, now inside the bracket, if I remove 2 to the power of 2x, I will be remaining with 2 to the power of 3 minus 6. Now I remove this factor here of 2 to the power of 2x, I will be remaining with uh, 6 multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 all over 2 to the power of 2x multiplied by 2 to the power of 2. So now we apply the method of cancellation of the common factors there. Then from there moving forward, we are going to say 2 to the power of 3, you can simplify it and you have 8 minus, if you say 6 times 2, you're going to get 12 all over 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Then you will say uh, 8 minus 12, you will get negative 4 and negative 4 divided by negative 4, you will get negative 1 as your answer. So that's how you simplify um, that uh, expression. It's as easy as uh, ABC. You just need to follow the correct steps. Going to the third uh, activity there, we can see that now the variables that are in the exponents we end now. Remember, they can put any variable there. They can put m, they can put x, they can put n, they can put y, but the method remains the same. Okay, uh, when we simplify this one, we can see that 2 to the power of n is going to be our leading factor there. So now we can say 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of n. Now we start to separate because the bases are the same there. Multiply by 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of n multiplied by 2 to the power of 3 all over, we separate there, we're going to have 2, 3, sorry, multiply by 2 to the power of n, multiply by 2 to the power of 1, minus 2 to the power of n. So we can see that our numerator and denominator, they, have, they both have two terms. And in those terms, we have what we call a common factor in our numerator, which is 2 to the power of n. So if you take out 2 to the power of n on your numerator, inside the bracket you will have 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 3. All over your denominator as well, it has a 2 terms with a common factor of uh, 2 to the power of n. I take it out as a common factor again, 2 to the power of n, then I will have 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. Remember I said the minute 
you have only this factor in a term. The minute you take it out, you are not going to remain with zero, but you are also going to remain with what? One. I explained it in uh, the previous example, so you have to bear it in mind. So now we have taken out our common factors. We can now apply the method of cancellation. From there, we work with our numbers there. If you say uh, 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 2, we are going to have 12. Then plus 2 to the power of 3 is going to be 8 all over. If you say 3 multiplied by 2, you're going to get 6. 6 minus 1, you're going to get 5. So 12 plus 8 is 20. 20 divided by 5, 5 goes into 20 four times. So that's how you are going to get the answer. Okay? So going to um, activity number four there, activity number one, four, we simplify the following uh, exponential expressions. So now we can see that the numerator, it has two terms and also denominator has two terms. But the leading factor is going to be 5 to the power of minus m. 5 to the power of minus m, that is going to be our leading factor. It means that's what we aim to take out as a common factor. So the first thing that you do is to separate because everything has the base of 5. So we're going to have to say 5 squared multiplied by 5 to the power of negative m minus 4 multiply by 5 to the power of negative m all over 5 to the power of negative m plus 2 multiply by 5 to the power of negative m. So after you have separated, then you can identify your common factor in your numerator. Then you take it out. We're going to have negative, I mean 5 to the power of negative m into 5 squared minus 4 all over. Now you can see in your denominator you also have to take 5 to the power of negative m as a common factor. Then when we take it out as a common factor inside the bracket, you will remain with 1 plus 2. Then we apply the cancellation method. They will cancel each other there. Then you will re be remaining with 5 to the power of 2 is going to be 25 minus 4 all over 2 plus 1 is 3. So if you say 25 minus 4, you're going to get 21. And 3 goes into 21 seven times. 3, is, three goes into 21 seven times. So that's how you simplify. Uh, the last uh, activity there, I mean the last uh, question in activity number one. So it's as simple as ABC. Check first uh, the steps and then try to follow the steps when you are dealing with uh, these uh, expressions, exponential expressions. Moving forward, now let's talk about the addition and subtraction of sets. Remember, um, the sets we're talking about the square roots but we also have like terms and unlike terms from the numbers that are inside the square root. So you can check when you're talking about the like terms. If you have uh, example number one, uh, the square root of x plus the square root of x. So the minute you see the root sign with the same number inside, then you can say those are the like terms. And what you do, you just add the coefficient. Remember the coefficient there, you have a uh, ghost ones. So you say 1 plus 1 is 2, so root of x. So that's how you identify the like terms. Uh, number 2, you can see that you have 3, uh, the square root of y minus square root of y. The numbers that are inside the bracket or variables that are inside the bracket are the same. So that's how uh, we identify them as the, the like terms. Then if you say 3 minus goes to 1 there, you're going to have 2 uh, root y. 
So that's how you identify the, the like terms there. The, the unlike terms, then you can see for the first example, if you have root of uh, x plus the square root of uh, y, you can see that the variables that are inside the root signs, they are not the same. So they will remain as the square root of x plus the square root of y. You can add them or you can subtract them. Like with the second activity there, it explains the same thing. When the numbers or the variables that are inside the square root are not the same, you can add or subtract those root signs. I hope that is clear. <coughs> Looking at activity number two, we simplify without the use of a calculator. Then we have four um, questions that we have to answer there. Remember, we have to be able to simplify the root sign without the calculator, but I will explain that it's very easy. So looking at the first one, the first one, the square roots are simplified to their lowest number. Then we can see that we have 4 root of 2 minus 5 root of 3 plus square root of 2 plus 2 square root of, I mean square root of 3, yes. So now we identify the square roots that have the same numbers. You can see that we have 2 and 2, 4 root of 2 and 2, they have the same number. But in front of this root 2, we have a ghost one there. So if you want to simplify this, you will simply say 4 plus 1, then you're going to get 5 root of 2. It's as simple as A, B, C. Looking at the second one, we have root 3 there and we also have root 3 there. Then we check um, the coefficients. Now if you say negative 5 plus 2, you're simply going to get negative 3 root of 3. So that's how simple you simplify these are uh, expressions of uh, sets. Okay? Going to the second one, you simplify without the use of a calculator. Now we have the square root of 50 plus the square root of 32 minus the square root of 18. So, how do we then simplify this? How do we break down um, the bigger numbers inside the square root without using a calculator? We have to be uh, good with our mul uh, multiplications. So we can check that 50, we have to uh, separate it into two numbers or two factors, but one of those numbers, it should be a perfect square. One of those two numbers, it should be a perfect square. So how do we do that? If we can look at 50, two numbers that I can multiply and they give me 50 and one of those two numbers, it has to be a perfect square. So you know that 50, we can say 10 times 5. 10 times 5 gives you 50, but none of those two numbers are, are giving you a perfect square. So we can try another one as 25 multiplied by 2. 25 multiplied by 2 does give you 50, and 25 is a perfect square. So that's how you have to look uh, into these multiplications. Yes, there are numbers that you, you can multiply, they give you 50, but you don't have a perfect square there. Then, there is the number that you can multiply, but one of them has to be a perfect square. So that's how we are going to simplify our uh, root signs. So we know that with 50, we are going to say 25 multiplied by 2. 25 multiplied by 2 does give you uh, 50. Plus, with uh, 32, remember, we have 16 multiplied by 2. 16 multiplied by 2 does give you um, 32, and 16 is a perfect square. Minus the square root of 18. Two numbers that you can multiply and give you 18, one of them should be a perfect square. You know that is going to be 9 multiplied by 2 because 
9 is a perfect square. Like I explained, you can say 6 multiplied by 3. 6 multiplied by 3, it's going to give you uh, 18, but none of the two numbers is a perfect square. So I hope it's very clear on how you should uh, simplify this uh, root signs. So here we have to separate then the square root of 25 multiplied by the square root of 2 plus the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 2 minus the square root of 9 multiplied 9 the square root of 9 square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 2. So now, when you say square root of 5, you have 5 root of, I'm um, square root of 25, it's 5 root of 2, plus square root of 16 is 4 root of 2, square root of 9 is minus 3 root of 2. So you can see that root of 2 is actually a like term in those uh, root signs. So we are going to say 5 plus 4 you get 9, 9 minus 3, you get 6. So the final answer is going to be 6 root of 2. So it's very simple to simplify uh, this type of uh, expressions. Okay? Looking at the third one, we simplify without the use of a calculator. And then we're looking at... Uh, the expressions that are, are given there. So looking at the, the first one, <laughs> we have 2 root of 45 minus uh, 20, I mean root of 20 minus root of 63. So how do we simplify this? We are going to say, okay, the first one we have 2 root of 45. We have so many uh, numbers that we can multiply together and they give us 45. But remember, one of those two numbers, they have to be a perfect square. So with 45, we are going to have 9 multiplied by 5. If you say 9 multiplied by 5, then that's where now you get 45. And 9 is a perfect square. Minus 20. You know we can have 10 times 2 we can have, I mean, sorry, 10 times 2, yes, but 10 times 2 is give you 20, but none of the two numbers, it's a perfect square. So we have to check the other ones, which is 4 and 5. If you say 4 multiplied by 5, 4 multiplied by 5, that's give you 20, and 4 is a perfect square. So plus uh, the square root of, with 63, we are going to have 9 multiplied by 7. If you say 9 multiplied by 7, you are going to get uh, 63. And 9 is a perfect square. So, moving forward, you are going to say 2 multiplied by root of 9 multiplied by root of 5 minus the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 5 plus the square root of 9 multiplied by the square root of 7. So, when you simplify, you're going to have 2 multiplied by 3 root of 5 minus 2 multiplied by root of 5 plus 3 multiplied by root of 7. So we're going to have 3 multiplied, I mean 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 root of 5 minus 2 root of 5 uh, plus 3 root of 5. So now we can check the like terms is only with the square root of 5. So 6 minus 2, you're going to have 4 root of 5 minus, uh, plus 3 root of 7. This one's supposed to be root of 7, not root of 5. Root of 7. So that's how you simplify it. Remember, root of 5 and root of 7 are the unlike terms. You can't add them. So you leave it like that. Okay, so looking at the, the last one, with the last one now, you are having uh, 75, square root of 75 minus the square root of uh, 48. So how do we then simplify this? We're going to have 
the square root of 75, then remember one of the two numbers that you multiply, one of them have to be a perfect square. So if you say uh, 25 multiplied by 3, you are going to get 75. And 75, it is a perfect, I mean 25 is a perfect square, minus the square root of. Two numbers that you can multiply there, and they give you 48, and one have to be a perfect square. It's 16 <coughs> multiplied by 3. If you say 16 multiplied by 3, you are going to get uh, 48. Then you can now say the square root of 25 multiplied by the square root of 3 minus the square root of 16 multiplied by the square root of 3. Then we are going to have 5 root of 3 minus 4 root of 3. So if you were to add the 2 or subtract the 2 because of the same uh, square root, then we're going to have 1 root of 3 because it's going to be 4, I mean 5 minus 4. Or you can say root of 3 is still 5. Correct? So that's how you simplify uh, these types of uh, questions without the use of a calculator. Okay, moving forward, we simplify without the use of a calculator. Looking at these uh, questions, you can see that now we apply the multiplications and divisions of sets. Correct? So, without any waste of time, let's look at the first one. So, looking at the first one, guys, don't be scared when you have to multiply the the root signs. Don't be scared. It's simple. Remember from the same um, rules of sets, it says if you have to multiply the two uh, square root signs that have the same number inside, when you multiply the two, the answer is going to be the number inside <coughs> the, the square roots. That is as simple as A, B, C. Correct? So that is the first rule. The second rule, it says, if ever I multiply the two square root like that with different numbers, the answer is going to be the square root of the product of those numbers. Simple as A, B, C. So those are the two a key rules that you need to understand and remember when you're dealing with such questions. So without any waste of time, let's tackle this question. We apply your FOIL method or we can say your distributive property. But how it works is that say root of 7 will multiply root of 7 and root of 7 will multiply negative root 6. Positive root 6 will multiply uh, <coughs> root of 7 and positive root 6 will multiply negative root 6. That's how you remove the bracket. So if you say root of 7 multiply by root of 7, the answer is going to be 7. So now your positive and negative is going to be negative and root of 7 multiplied by the root of 6. So that's where now you multiply the two numbers that are inside the square root. So if you say 7 multiplied by 6, you are going to get 42. Then positive multiplied by positive, this remains positive. And you also multiply the root of 6 multiplied by root of 7 is going to give you 42 as well. Then positive multiplied by negative is negative. Then root of 6 multiplied by the root of 6, you get the answer inside those roots, which is 6. Then from there, you can see that these are the like terms. They cancel each other. The other one is negative. The other one is positive. Then 7 minus 6 gives you 1. So that's how you simplify uh, that multiplication of those two um, root signs. So it's as easy as ABC.
when you know the rules. Correct? The second one now, we have to simplify uh, in uh, open bracket 4 minus root of 3 all squared. So now, here the square, it means we have two brackets. So how do we simplify that? We open two brackets of the same numbers. That's what that squares mean. And then simplifying the two brackets, we know that we use our foil method. So I'm showing you what is it that we are multiplying so that you remember what to multiply when we're dealing with multiplication, when we're removing the bracket. So 4 multiplied by 4, you're going to get 16. Then 4 multiplied by negative uh, root of 3 is going to be negative 4 root of 3. Then negative root of 3 multiplied by 4 is still going to be 4 root of 3. And negative multiplied by negative is going to be positive. Root of 3 multiplied by root of 3, you're going to get 3. So here you can see that 16 plus 3 are the like terms. If you add them, you get 19. Then negative 4 root 3 and negative 4 root 3 are also the like terms. Then you're going to have negative 8 root of 3. So that's how you simplify. That's how you simplify uh, that question there. It's as easy as A, B, and C. What you need to know is to know how to remove the bracket and remember our rules of like terms and how to multiply the square root signs. Correct? Then looking at the third one, it looks a little bit complicated, but it's not. As long as you know the method that you need to apply here. So the first uh, thing that you need to know is to identify that, okay, we have a bracket squared there. We have square root of 2 minus square root of 1 all squared. That squared there, it means you, you have to have two brackets of the same numbers inside. So the first thing that you are going to do there is to open those two brackets. After opening the bracket, they must have root 2 minus root 3, root 2 minus root of 3. That's what they have to have. Then now we're going to have 10 minus 4 root of 6. Then now, the first thing that we have to do is to remove those brackets. Then how do we remove the brackets? If you say square root of 2 multiplied by square root of 2, you're going to get 2. Square root of 2 multiplied by square root of negative 3, we're going to have negative square root of. With this one, I said you must multiply the numbers inside the square root. 2 multiplied by 3, 6. Minus, because now you multiply negative square root of 3 and positive square root of 2, you're going to still get square root of 6. Negative multiplied by negative, it gives you positive. Then square root of 3 multiplied by square root of 3 is going to be positive 3. So there in your, <laughs> your denominator, you can still write it as 10 minus 4 root of 6. So now, Going to your numerator, we know we can simplify. 2 plus 3 is going to give you 5. And negative root of 6 and negative root of 6, you're going to have 2 root of 6. All over. But now you can check that your denominator, if there's something common with your numerator, only if we factorize your denominator there. So if you can check your denominator, 
we have something common in those two terms. 10 minus 4 root of 6. We have something in common there, which is the number 2. If you uh, take out the common factor of 2 from 10, we are going to have 5 minus. If you're taking out uh, 2 from 4 there, we are going to have 2 root of 6. So you can see that your numerator and denominator, there's the common uh, factors there that can cancel each other. Then here we're going to remain with 1. Then the answer is going to be 1 over 2. So with all these things, the minute you have uh, simplified everything and uh, you arrived at your answer, go back to your question. Punch that question inside the calculator and check if ever you get the same answer. But you only do that when you have shown all the steps up until the, the last uh, step there. Then you can go and test this thing inside the calculator and check if ever you will get uh, 1 over 2. That is uh, the trick part that you can do to check if you have arrived at the correct answer. But nevertheless, this is how you simplify uh, this. Looking at the activity number three, the last question there, we having three root of 18 minus root of 50 plus two uh, root of uh, 98, correct? So now all over uh, root or the square root of 128. So we have to simplify this. So simplifying these guys, remember, always when you simplify the square roots, you're looking for two numbers that you can multiply, but one of those two numbers have to be a perfect square. So let's start with the first one. 3 multiplied by the square root of, we have done this one in the previous example, we're going to have 9 multiplied by 2. Minus the square root of 50, we have also done it, which is 5 multiplied by 2. Plus 2 root of. What are the two numbers that I can multiply and they give me 98? And one of those two numbers is a perfect uh, square. If I say 49 multiplied by 2, 49 multiplied by 2 is going to give you 98. And 49 is a perfect square. All over. Now, I have to find the perfect square that can give me 128. Uh, now we are talking about big numbers, but you have to think. So we will say uh, 64 multiplied by 2. If you say 64 multiplied by 2, that's where you will get 128. So that's how you have to simplify uh, those ones. Then from there, it's simple because you know that you separate uh, these root signs minus the square root of 25 multiplied by the square root of 2, then plus 2 multiplied by square root of 49 multiplied by the square root of 2, all over the square root of 64 multiplied by the square root of 2. So you're going to have uh, 3 multiplied by 3, root of 2, minus 5 root of 2 plus 2 multiplied by 7 root of 2 all over the square root of 64 we know that is 8 uh, root of 2. So when we simplify uh, this ones, 3 multiplied by 3 we're going to have 9 root of 2 minus 5 root of 2 plus 14 root of 2, correct, we say it's 9 root of 2 minus 5 root of 2 plus 14 
root of 2. It's better that way. Then we still have 8 root of 2. So now, if you take your calculator and say um, 9 minus 5, you are going to get 4. 9 minus 5, you are going to get 4. And 4 plus 14, that's where you get um, 18 root of 2 all over 8 root of 2. So you can see that root of 2 and root of 2 can cancel out there. Then the answer that is going to be there, it's when you have to uh, simplify. If you say 18 divided by 8, you can see the only number that can go to 18 and 8 is 2. 2 goes into 18 9 times and 2 goes into 8 4 times. So the answer there is going to be 9 over 4. Like I said, you can go back here to your question, put it inside your calculator, and check if you will get 9 over 4. And that's how you have to simplify uh, these uh, sets. So this is the end of the lesson. Please go through this lesson again and then learn more about the exponential expression and the sets. Thank you.